Isn't that crazy? Like girls love Harry Potter. I yeah, dude. I've <laughs> met more girls who love Harry Potter than guys. Oh yeah. Well, isn't that it's like, strange though? Because it's like fantasy, and there's yeah, but like, like, like it's hair. It's a dude. Yeah, but he's effeminate. Yeah. Okay. Never I'm mind. telling you right now, it, it's like it's a chick movie. I, I'm not saying it's bad if you like it because I I I I get it and I want to like it. I want to be into it. Yeah. But I just something doesn't click with me with wizards. It. Like, it's not that. I, like, come the, on. No, it's not that. I mean, is that's that kind of cool? Is it though? Yeah, I, dude. I was never into witches and wizards. Um, you're into vampires, dog. That's so much straighter. For real, you suck people's neck, and it don't matter what it is. It's a guy, a girl, a fucking mix of the two. You suck in a neck, dog. All right. And you sit. It's gay. And you <laughs> sit, and you have that little mannerism where you do this shit, and you go, mm, it's too bright in here. <laughs> it's gay, bro. And I'm not saying it's wrong. Be a gay vampire. I don't care. Like, I'll support you regardless. But if you are a vampire, you're gay. Yeah. That was one of the things about Interview with the Vampire with Tom Cruise I've never and Brad seen it. Pitt. Never yeah. saw it. They were gay. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Lestat and what was the other one? I can't remember the other other vampire's name, but but yeah, they were gay and it was kind of strange because that was like the first ever gay vampire <laughs> thing. And it was Tom Cruise, Brad Pitt. I mean I'll but watch like, it. <laughs> but like <laughs> I'll fucking watch it. I don't care. And then uh Brad Pitt was kinda into Kirsten Dunst who was like 15 at the time. Yikes. But in vampire years, maybe 300. Oh, dude, perfect way to get out of a sex charge like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I swear, officer, she's a vampire. <laughs> yeah, nobody ever brought up the fact in Twilight that Edward Cullen, you know, Robert Pattinson, was like 200 or something years old, and Kirsten, you know, Kristen Stewart, her character was like straight up 16. Eh, whatever. It's, it's funny, though. Because he's a glittery But like, whatever. chicks are into that, though. Isn't yeah. that isn't that fascinating? Okay, let me tell you something. As long as you look 18, you're fine. You're fine. Well, here's the thing. Okay. So, I don't know where you're exactly going with this, but I'll I'll bite and I'll try to like <laughs> go into this a little bit. Okay. So, when you talk about when you talk about like the So, when you talk about the <laughs> Someone told me. Uh, uh, you're giving me off track, so let me finish this. Yeah, so, yeah. okay, when you talk about the actual like fantasy and sort of like undertones of like sexual interest and stuff like that, advertised to like young adults and adults, you always place the character who's 16, 17. You always do that because people who are in their 20s, 30s, even 40s want to be that innocent teenager again. Yeah, so I it has a si- so it has a side effect of being like seen as creepy, where you're like, oh, what you're into like banging a 16 year old and you're 250 years old. It's like, yeah, if you look at it like that, sure. But the way that this works is it's all part of the advertising train that generates money. Yeah. It's always going to be somebody who's 25, somebody who's 30, somebody who's 35, who's like, oh man, in high school I was so innocent and just it was so easy to like just have a crush on somebody and like you know, like I was saying this, it was it's like. The opposite, but almost true of Lost in Translation. It's like kind of the opposite, but true. It's like, it's almost like hitting it on the head with that. Like where Lost in Translation is a fantastic movie. And again, I love that movie, but I didn't realize what kind of image that put on me to like every woman in my life. Yeah, I got to watch the movie. Okay. So every woman in my life, and I talked to somebody about this. They said, yeah, Lost in Translation for every guy is a masterpiece. For every girl, it's a nightmare. Huh. Because... It's just sort of, since you haven't seen it, I don't want to spoil too much. But basically, it's older like, man, kind of interested in a younger girl, sort of, but not really. Like right. it's a friendship. It is a friendship. Like I think it's pretty much established fully, a hundred percent that it's a friendship. But it's like you watch, like you watch the like the moments in this guy who knows he's older, mm-hmm. but you could see it's almost like that because he's with this girl. It's like he all of a sudden became this young man again. Right. Who was just like running around with this young girl being like kind of a young relationship, young flirt or whatever. And it's like, it's like that thing of like being removed from your life and just all of a sudden becoming a new person in this other country. And then all of a sudden being sort of transported back to when you're young. Yeah. And it's like, that's sort of what it is. So it's like that movie almost like hit it on the head where like you really want to be young again. Like everybody wants to be young again. Yeah. Especially when you, 
your time as a younger person wasn't used yeah like you thought it could have been and it never is yeah i mean i guess it, it never it never is i mean i think some people do they peak they peak early. Well, they yeah, they peak, but then yeah. they also have opportunities to like fully express themselves at that age. Yeah. A lot of people don't. Yeah, and here's the thing. I I just think that in general, it's like that thing where like you want to go back in time with all the knowledge you have now. It's the same sort of thing because like yeah. in all honesty, looking back, like I do say like I don't live with regrets because everybody wants to say that, but I think we all do. Like, yeah. We all have to. For sure. Because I have a lot of regrets about when I was growing up. Like, dude, I, I should have given a shit about my schooling. I should have actually tried. Yeah. I should have tried. And also, I shouldn't have been such a, like, a, cl- like, a uh, closeted. Shouldn't have been so closeted. <laughs> <laughs> should, should just come should out. Should just come out of the fucking closet, dude. Just start sucking every dick. I don't know why the fuck I was so resistant to dick sucking. <laughs> why the fuck, dude? I watched one vampire movie, one vampire and I'm like, movie, shit. And all I want to do is close the blinds and suck a dick. <laughs> anyway, so, so you know, just be a regular-ass vampire. Yeah. You know? Anyways, no. So, looking back, like, uh, I didn't want to be, like, I shouldn't have been so reserved and not, like, you know, myself. I should have just been myself. Like, I should have yeah. been more outward and expressive and you know i probably would have had a better time right but i didn't because i was always afraid of what people thought about me and yeah. didn't fucking say anything and yeah. didn't ask any girls out because i was afraid of them rejecting me so i would For only sure. have like random little things with girls like yeah. just random little small incidents but like i didn't have like you know but then again like that's what discovering yourself is it just takes time like you don't yeah. know yeah you, you just don't want to sometimes you don't want to be a 40 year old man who still isn't expressing himself? Oh, properly. dude, it's a nightmare. That that's I think that's the worst. As long as yeah. you're, you're like building in that like the ability to, to express yourself or just get to know yourself. Well, yeah, I mean, but yeah, yeah you're you're growing and, and and that's a part of growing, right? Is being able to express yourself.